Coming up on Regarding Men, Australian school forces boys to apologize to girls. Welcome to Regarding Men. Yeah, I'm here with Paul Elam and Janice Viamingo, two of my favorite men's advocates. Smart, quick, and funny. Love them both. Anyway, um, we're here to talk about Regarding Men, where we hold men in high regard and where red pill isolation comes to die a quick and painless death. And it's a beautiful thing to see, man. The Regarding Men stuff is just wonderful. If you want to sign up, go to Regarding Men on Subscribestar. Go to subscribestar.com slash regarding dash men and sign up for as little as $5 a month. And come on and join us, man. We got, yeah, it'll be a link below. We got Zoom meetings every day. Uh, today we're going to have a community meeting, actually. So that, that's always fun to have everybody together at the same time. Anyway, come join us. But today we're going to talk about something really strange. And that is forced apologies from boys to girls. Why would anyone want to force an apology? Well, it seems like Brower College, which is actually, I think, a middle school in Australia, um, they had an assembly recently, and they um, it was about sex assault, and they had the boys stand symbolically in apology to all the girls for all the rapes the men had committed on those girls. Uh, well, this kind of confused some of the boys, and they went home, and they said, Mom, why are they making us apologize for something we didn't do? And this appropriately pissed off a lot of the parents, and man, it was great to see some of those parents pissed off. In fact, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, a petition out now to have this woman resign. You know, it's, I don't think it's garnered a lot of support, but just to see it out there, there's people who are pissed off about this, which is actually one thing that's different from this event than the others we've seen. People react are reacting with anger, and appropriately so. Well, behind this whole deal was this principal of the school. Her name is Jane Boyle. And Jane, um, well, here's what Jane says. Schools play an important role in the promotion of safety and respect of all students, except boys. And discussions in schools around respect towards women and girls are a key part of this work. Wait a minute. And respect towards women and girls are a key part of this work. She forgot boys. Yeah, well, you can tell she forgot boys, because when you, when you look at what happened at this daggone assembly, I mean, she completely forgot respecting boys. Then the parents had a fit, and then Jane comes back and she says, In retrospect, while well-intended, we recognize that part of the assembly was inappropriate. Hmm. Jane's backing up a little bit. You know, I'm trying to think of a way to describe Jane. What can I say about Jane? Jane, you ignorant slut. Dan, that is exactly what I was thinking. Jane, <laughs> you ignorant slut. And it's just not the standing that's that's bad with all of this. There's even more. But let's let's open this up, guys. What do you guys think of all this? Well, one thing that I think is important to point out here is that when you gender respect or when you assign respect based on sex, you're it's not respect, it's deference. And that is the point here. Yes. Um, this is the same language across the board every time. We want respect for all human beings. Now let's talk about respecting girls and women <laughs> and, and how men should do that. It's true. It's the, the first proposition is just lying bullshit. It's just garbage thrown out there to paint a, a, a euphemistically appropriate facade uh, on what they're actually doing. But what they're really talking about is codified chivalry and uh, men staying on their knees. And, you know, the apology is exactly what they're going after. I don't know why she looked back on this, I guess, since it pissed off a few parents. Uh, but so she paid some lip service to looking back on this and deciding, well, maybe that was inappropriate. That's, Jane, you're lying. 
you're just lying. You Jane know what you're doing. Slut. She has been <laughs> furthering this garbage and systemically across the board. This is what she was aiming for. And so when, when a bunch of parents got upset, she paid a little lip service maybe to cool them down. Uh, but look, they're going for the apology. Yep. And this is something you, if we haven't learned anything from cancel culture, it's never apologize. Exactly. Never, 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 never. Not for anything you did in the past, not for anything that's been misconstrued. And oh my God, I touched a woman on the shoulder in 1981. In church. Um, <laughs> yeah, burn him. Uh, don't apologize for that stuff. And I want to say a hearty thank you to some of the young men from that school who voiced their opinion saying this was bullshit. Yes. And, it's, and I think how pathetic it is that you have to look to a 12-year-old for courage <laughs> when yeah. you don't have any courage from any adults in the room. It's absolutely pathetic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I really would like to express my my respect and and thankfulness to the young boys and men young men who said this is terrible and i would really encourage boys and and young men in schools if this kind of thing is going on i really support you in in expressing your discomfort with it expressing your well thought through outrage that this is ridiculous. We learned <laughs> supposedly throughout the history of the 20th century that collectivist campaigns of inborn guilt attached to the identity group that someone was born into, that that is, it's the signature of totalitarian excess. And, and you know, I, I, well, I can't express my disgust more strongly. This woman's apology, Jane Boyle, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's completely inadequate to say that this was well-intentioned. In what way was it well-intentioned? How can you force young boys who have never done anything wrong in their lives to take responsibility for something that a minority of their sex has done <laughs> While, well, of course, the other sex is held guiltless for the various wrongdoings that it has committed. Um, you know, if you wanted to create in boys and young men deep resentment and anger, justified resentment, you couldn't find a better way than this to humiliate them, to force them to stand, to apologize for things they haven't done. And um, the only other response, of course, will be self-loathing and shame and an inability to respond in a mature and healthy way to the opposite sex. Uh, there's no way that this could have had a good result. So to say that it was well-intentioned but inappropriate, I mean, that's what you say when you make a joke on the spur of the moment. And in the moment, you know, you think it's going to be funny, but it turns out to have been rather crude or it made somebody upset, you know, or something. It's, it was insulting unintentionally. That's inappropriate, but well-intentioned. This, she thought this through. And we know now we've had communications from various friends of ours in Australia. This has been an ongoing part of a program. Tom, you've done a lot of research into it. The forced apology the entire programming about respect for girls and how boys have to take responsibility and it's all on boys and the respectful relationships program that uh, the Australian government has poured millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into. This has been going on and it's not you know, well, a well-intentioned, but oops, we didn't realize kind of thing. This is very <laughs> thoroughly thought through and it is designed exactly as you said, Paul, to wrong foot boys, to put them in a position of subordination where they have to pay deference to the superior sex. Codified chivalry. I think that was a great phrase, Paul. That's exactly, exactly. what it is. And yeah. why do they want to do that, though? What's the reason they would want to do that? And I think it's pretty clear. You know, they are literally brainwashing. You know, this is, well, this is brainwashing. 
It, it is brainwashing. And one thing uh, about it, why are they doing this? Well, yeah. this is what women do when they're in charge. This is <laughs> re relational aggression. I was going to say that. Also codified, this is relational aggression. And exactly. That is a female thing. This um, is bullying. Sure it is. It's, it's absolutely bullying. bullying. And we need to call it out for what it is. You know, when we see something like this, we need to say, hey, that's bullying. You're bullying those boys. You know, and when you see the SJWs, same crap, it's bullying. What they're doing is bullying. And we need to call it out for what it is, you know, because that's what yeah. it is. And there's no excuse for it. You know, the only good news out of this. Go ahead. I was going to say the only good news in this story is that some parents have very vocally expressed their shock yes. and horror. And I'm yes. really glad about that. And I assume that this has been going on for years and that some parents in the past have also tried to, you know, lodge a protest and that it's mainly fallen on deaf ears. It's only when parents en masse make it clear that they won't stand for this, that yes. it can ever be modified or thankfully or hopefully stop altogether. But, um, you know, I, I, when I was reading uh, the article about this, which we'll include in the link below, I was glad to see that some mothers in particular, because we know that mothers will be the only ones that count in this kind of a scenario. Some mothers were really outraged, but some mothers thought it was a good idea as right. well. Right. And, you know, I'm just trying to imagine a scenario in which all the girls had to stand up and apologize for what, for, for uh, uh, false accusations, let's say, or for being Don't slutty. <laughs> for teasing boys sexually, for flaunting themselves sexually, and then accusing a boy who, who reaches out a hand or, or you know, says something inappropriate. No, that's never going to happen. And nobody would think that that was a good idea. Uh, and that would never be dismissed as a well-intentioned but inappropriate thing to do. So we can see the massive double standards, even in the response of the principal and in the, nice. I think, still too tepid response of parents. The parents should be withdrawing their their boys out of this school and their yeah. girls too, because the girls shouldn't you know, have anything to do with this either. This is gonna ruin these girls. You know, these girls are gonna become little monsters as they grow up expecting this kind of deference and yep. knowing that they can play the damsel anytime they don't get their way anytime they want revenge because something hasn't you know gone in the way they hoped it would uh yeah the parents should should act decisively it's not enough to have a petition calling on jane boyle to resign she probably won't i'm sure she won't anyway but that isn't enough it wouldn't help she'll just be re replaced by another woman who is si similarly feminist and chauvinistic in her attitudes there are jane boyles in positions of power all across australia and the whole english-speaking world shaming boys making them feel small telling them that there's something wrong with them and until parents say, there's absolutely no way, I'm not supporting this with my money. I'm not subjecting my boys to this kind of horrific dehumanizing propaganda. It'll just keep on going. We know that it now it has been going in Australia for years. I'm sure it goes on in many other schools as well. Yes, and it is indeed propaganda. You know, if you look at it, it's very well crafted, you know, because if you look at brainwashing and propaganda, the, the first thing you do is you attack the identity. You know, you go after the identity, and that's what they're doing with these boys. They're attacking their identity. They're not human. You know, they're, they're not human enough. That boys are not human. you you got to become yeah. human. And then the apology comes after that, which is exactly what the communist Chinese used to do. They would pummel people with their uh, just identity, just thrashing their identity. You, you're, the, you're the problem. You're the problem. You've caused all the world's difficulties. La, 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 la. And then ask for an apology. And once mm -hmm. someone starts apologizing, they're finished. You know, they're, they're literally finished because the, the mind is built so that once we start apologizing, we start believing the crap. We start believing what's been told to us. And we can't go back. It's this dissonance if you, if you try and go yeah. back. And so, you know, it's amazing how well-crafted this thing was. In fact, you can't find anything about the content of that assembly. If you look, if someone out there finds something about the how, what they had in the whole assembly, I'd love to see it.
The one thing we do know is that right before they asked the boys to stand, there was a speech that was given by a, another young man from another school in another city about this issue. And we can play a part of that speech now if you guys would like. And sure. you can get a sense yeah, I think it's of totally appropriate. You, you get a sense of what these boys heard before they were supposed to stand up and apologize. And this is well crafted. So here, let's see what he's got to say. Let me tell you the numbers. Every single week, a man kills his partner or former partner. Before the age of 16, one in five women experience some form of sexual abuse and 97% of sexual offences are from men. This is not solely an issue of protecting women, but an issue of educating men. Stop being boys. Be human. Aha! Uh -huh. Stop. Imagine saying, stop being girls. Be human. Exactly. Imagine the outrage of that. Insanity. Absolute insanity. This is what they were told before they were supposed to stand up. Can you see how, you know, it's not just the standing that's wrong with this thing. It's the whole thing that we don't really know except for this. And this is just a real short segment of his speech where he basically said, you know, boys, we need to make sure these poor girls are not sexually abused and it's your fault. You know, you're part of the problem unless you are part of the solution, you know. <laughs> and uh, by the way, I think you're looking at maybe the 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 first official member of the future henpecked husbands uh, <laughs> uh, society. This guy is on well on his way to being a doormat <laughs> in his relationship life. I'm and it's I'm dead serious. I know you start regurgitating this kind of rhetoric, this sort of. I don't even know what the word other than is stronger than obsequious. There's something here that is just his whole identity as a human being has been sold out to trying to get a pat on the head from women. And that kind of role modeling is like for the rest of the boys in that school, if some of them end up watching this video, that guy there, don't be that. Yeah. You will not end well yes. if you're that. Yeah, I, I found myself wondering about where he got this information, how it was presented to him. And yeah. my fantasy was he's got two feminist parents, you know, maybe two women, but he's got two feminist parents who have been feeding him this for a long time, and he is basically parroting back what's been told to him over and over and over again, you know? Yep, I would guess either no father in the home or a simp father in the yeah. home. Yeah. But there's no real masculine strength in that boy's life. I Not just yet. about guarantee it. Hopefully he's going to break out of it. We'll see. Uh, I sure hope so. Uh, I mean, he could have gone onto the website of White Ribbon Australia to yes. find those statistics. Or in fact, he could have put into uh, Google as a search term violence against sexual violence against women. And those are many, many web pages would come up telling him that kind of thing and saying nothing about the statistics for male suicide, saying nothing for the statistics about violence against men, how many men die every week in Australia, how many men kill themselves, a far greater number than, than kill their partners, uh, how many, well, I mean, how, how could you possibly believe that 97% of all sexual violence is committed by uh, by men, simply by reading, you know, into statistics or looking at, uh, for instance, the Center for Disease Control statistics uh, about sexual assault. It's very, very clear that that number is simply plucked out of the air, out of some yes. fevered feminist brain. Yes. Uh, it's, it's really sad to see the level of indoctrination. Uh, you know, these guys should be learning math and science and writing skills the this kind of indoctrination has no place in the schools whatsoever and i read in the article it said you know somebody was saying oh this program has a has a proven track record of reducing sexual violence well for oh, one yeah. thing oh. i don't see i mean how could you possibly <laughs> you know just hearing that how could you possibly say that that one thing <laughs> 
has led to another at the same time as we're being told that the problem of sexual violence is getting worse all the time. All so, the time. How can it? <laughs> how can both be true? Uh, it, I don't know. It's it's just awful, you know. It, and if you if you put forced apology into Google right away, you come up with articles in Psychology Today and everywhere else saying that this is a very bad practice. It's a very bad thing to do to children and young people. It has the exact opposite of what it claims to be intended to do. So, you know, what level of education and thinking are the Jane Boyles of the world applying to these programs? Yes. Uh, it's, it just boggles the mind how such maliciousness, such mean-spiritedness, such a punitive bigotry can occupy these positions of power. And the vast majority of parents don't even seem to be aware that it's going on and are not lifting their voices loud enough against it. I don't know why any parent would allow a child to attend a school like this. Well, I, I mean, I guess I know why, because they don't have any choice. Maybe both parents are working or, you know, whatever it happens to be, they can't do homeschooling. So that, you know, this is all there is for them because every school is like this, but uh, it's just, it's so upsetting. I think that we have some clue about why we, they get all this information. And we can look at this page right here to tell us a little bit more about it. Guess what? The Victorian budget for 2020-21 invests $37.5 million for respectful relationships to support schools and early childhood educators to promote respect, blah, 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 blah. Okay, guess what respectful relationships is all about? Any guesses? <laughs> women and girls! <laughs> it's all about women and girls, boys and girls. I mean, I... They have, and it's really interesting because they do have their, their worksheets and their, their things online. But in order to get to the stuff where you can see that it's, uh-oh, feminist stuff, you got to really drill down a ways. The stuff on the surface is all, it's all about everyone. You know? <laughs> but when you drill down a little bit, in fact, I, I drilled down a little bit last night because I couldn't stand not looking at this stuff. And here's what I found. Here's one example. All right, you see on the left there, the uh, there's four examples of gender-based violence. Yeah. Physical, a man hitting his partner for not having dinner ready when he wants it. Hmm, how often have we seen that one? <laughs> not very yeah. often. I don't even remember seeing that when I was little. Verbal, young men calling out mean comments to another man because he seems feminine. Psychological, a boy threatening to damage the reputation of a girlfriend if she does not do as he wants. Sexual, a man forcing a woman to have some form of sexual contact with him against her wishes. Anybody see a commonality there? Hmm, it's Hello. always boys and the perpetrators. <laughs> always boys and men. And look at this, this, this sort of lead to this too. It says that note that anyone can be the target of gender-based violence, but that some groups, I wonder which groups, <laughs> including girls and women, transgender, and same-sex attracted people, what the fuck does that even mean, uh, are, are more likely to be tolerated, uh, targeted. Right. It's, it, this is just, uh, like, where is the evidence to support any of that? It's the girls and the gays. <laughs> Well, and the, and the wannabe women and and what have you, but I'm I'm wondering where is there any kind of backup for these assertions that that girls and women are more oh, likely to be targeted? There's not. There's not. Of course not. If you look at the research, and again, you got to drill down a little bit, but like this this research thing I did on on boys and sexual abuse, you know, if you drill down to the bottom, you find out that. Uh-oh, yes, girls are more likely to be abused sexually, but that's because in the least intrusive types of sexual abuse, girls far outnumber the boys. But if you go down to the bottom where it's raped, completed rape, the boys outnumber the girls. So they're all talking about, oh, so many girls are sexually abused. But look at what happens to the worst of it is the boys get it. And I wrote to the researchers, I said, hey, you know, you found out that the boys are raped more often than the girls. Why didn't you put that into the this abstract or the or at least into the into the um, 
discussion. They said, well, we talked about it, but we didn't think it was that important. <sighs> and that's what we're up against. That's what we're up against. These researchers don't see it as important. It's like, oh my God. They found out, they literally, their, their numbers showed that the boys were raped more often than the girls. And they, eh, well, it's the girls who have the problem. Oh God. And I guarantee you, Jane Boyle <sighs> has the same attitude. Yes. Child abusers like this have the same way of dismissing the pain and trauma and experience of, uh, of boys across the board, it's just like Janice said, this is going on in our education systems entirely across the Western world and, and yep. even more uh, as, as time progresses into the East as well. Yep. Uh, this is the ideology that's being furthered and it's, a, it's an abusive ideology. It really and is. Absolutely tragic what yep. they're doing. And Tom, we had one reaction from a male student that I think that you can oh, yes. uh, post for us, because oh, I want oh. I want people to see an example of what these parents should be saying, yes. and and mm -hmm. what I hope other boys in that school start saying to the authority figures there. They need to hear what this boy has to say. Yes, you're talking about the text or the Snapchat thing. Yeah, yes. 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 there it is, right there. And he, he said. Brower is the most fucked up school you can go to. If this offends anyone, I do not care. I personally will stand by this till I die. Those That is music to my ears. <laughs> this is what needs to be said. Yes. And directly yes. to the face of these authority figures that are perpetrating this abusive hoax on the boys in their schools. Yes. And he goes on and to say. Go ahead. Guys go through as much shit as girls do. Even if it's mainly girls, I don't care. Guys are always the bad guys in everything these days. All I see is he done this and that. It's never I done this, so he done that. Or I mean, we don't hear the rest, but <laughs> you're right on. Brilliant. You know? he, he sees through it all, all of it. 12 to 14 years old, my hat is off to you, sir. You know? Out of the mouths of children, the truth yeah. comes where adults yes. fail. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I really do hope that that part of this story is circulated well and thoroughly through the through the male population of that school, so that they get an example of how to respond to people practicing class and sex based hatred toward them in the education system. Yes. This is what needs to be rendered. I mean, and I'm not, I'm not saying that to be comical. Yep. Uh, I'm saying up front that we need to start teaching these boys to give the finger to the system yes. that treats yeah. them in this way. Yes. And mm -hmm. the, the response in that audience when they said, we want the boys to get up and apologize should have been, fuck you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they should Amen. all have just sat there. And the biggest yep. problem is that it's not just Broward College where this is happening. It's every place, yep. you know, and the boys yep. are getting this kind of crap and it, it starts subtly and it ends up with standing to apologize to the girls. It's just crazy crap. It all goes to the theory too, folks, misogynists are made, not born. Mm -hmm. If you want yep. to teach boys to hate girls, treat them like this. Yeah, treat them like this their whole life. Absolutely, lives. and they will end up with genuine hatred for women and girls. And that is, I sometimes I think this is exactly what feminists want, mm -hmm. so they can justify yeah. more They're funding and, and more victim yeah. ideology, produce a bunch of women hating boys who would have loved women, who would have sacrificed for women, who would have laid down in traffic for yep. the women in their lives. Instead, grow up saying screw this screw women it's all rigged and yeah uh, it's just that's and, what they're producing yeah yeah crazy crazy hmm. it's hard to know what else to say i know that's it i, I know. think that is it come on parents start standing up for your sons and daughters yes and anyone out there that knows someone at brower college please send them this video Yes, yeah, absolutely. We'd, we'd love to hear if from you them. Know somebody that knows somebody at Broward College. Yeah, please 
try to figure out a way to get this video. Hopefully some of the boys will see it and they will realize what was done to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. By these and awful write it. adults. And appreciate and write it. a polite letter of of absolute outrage to Jane Boyle and let yes. her know what you think of her program. Yes. And to let those boys know that we admire them and we respect yep. them for what they've done. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So and critical. we do not blame them for anything that they have not done. Really? Be really? Abusive. It's like, look, if you did something wrong, apologize for it. Yeah. If you didn't yeah. do anything wrong, you've got nothing to apologize for. And don't. Yeah. It's a trap. Yeah. Yes, whatever you right. do, it's don't. a trap. Ay, 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 it's a trap. Yeah. My hat's off to the one kid, though. I, I, I hesitate even really to call him a kid. He's more adult uh, than most of the parents involved in this story. Yes. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. And with that, I think we will end by saying that men are good. <laughs> So what of a success. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Oh, oh my God. Okay. We'll see you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>